going on guys welcome back to my channel on today's video i'm going to be talking to you about the different types of collars and leads that i use and i'll try and point out a few pros and cons of each one now bear in mind i've not got every single collar i've not got every single lead but i'm just going to be pointing out the ones that i've been using so far and the reasons why i tend to use specific ones over the other ones now with that being said let's get straight into it first of all let's go with the lead that i started off with a retractable lead I'm sure you all know what one of these are now i'll tell you the reason why i personally like using one of these and why i still tend to use it even to this day i like the fact that it retracts on its own of course you get different types of leads that are long like long line leads and training training leads etc that's what they're exactly designed for for training now obviously if you're if you're doing training with your dog then it's absolutely fine but personally i don't want to be carrying around rails of lead leads on my arm so it's just a lot more convenient for me so i'll tell you the main times that i tend to use this lead which probably are the pros of it i use it when i'm giving tucks a little bit of free time because i'm not always strict militant with him always telling expecting him and telling him to stay at my heel and always walk right by my side sometimes I allow him allow him to explore he's a puppy at the end of the day and he needs to learn so when i'm giving him his free time I allow him to go as far as he want and then retract back in which he does on his own and to be honest with you I think using this lead has taught him to you know like automatically turn around and see how far he's gone from me so that's one of the reasons I use this lead another reason I use this lead like I said a minute ago is I don't have to carry rails and rails around on my arm so I can just have the convenience of it railing back in so it is very convenient and another reason is sometimes I'm in a rush for example if I've got appointments or I'm busy with work or there's a lot going on that day I know Tux needs to burn off his energy so if I have him just walking at my heel I'm not going to be consistently and constantly running you understand I'm gonna end up getting out of breath I'm gonna end up getting tired and Tux has got a lot more stamina than I have so I, th I think one of the good things about this lead is when I'm walking with him he can jog at his own pace he can jog back at his own pace do you know like obviously because it extends so if he stops for a moment and he's sniffing and i carry on walking past him then he runs up and catches back up to me when i call him so it's very convenient because it does burn off his energy now the negative i'd say about this type of lead is the handle it's quite uncomfortable when you're holding it for a while if he pulls and he tugs there's no uh, indication or warning it's gonna like shock you a little bit and it does tend to hurt your shoulder if it's a strong dog like the Dolby and another thing I'd say that's negative about it is it's awkward to adjust and sometimes the rail actually starts to smell and it's a little bit difficult to wash but yeah it is what it is next up we had the zero shock or anti-shock or some people call it the bungee lead um, personally I got my my one from Jolly's which is a pet store um, I think they're doing pets at home as well but when I was in Jolly's basically one of the customer service reps they uh, persuaded me into it because they seen Tux kind of pulling me this is when I first had him and he was kind of hurting my arm on my shoulder I'll be honest with you so they kind of sold it to me by getting me to test it out and what I did. A, I tried doing a smart one. I went on eBay and Amazon, checking how much they were, and it was similar price between 18 to 25 pound. Um, now, my tip to you guys is, if you, any of you want it, get yourselves to Wilco or Wilkinson's, and you can get exactly the same one for literally five pound. But anyway, the good thing about this lead is it keeps your dog um, walking quite close by to you, so that's a positive thing. But also, you can see it as a negative thing. I think is obviously you want it to extend but I believe there is longer versions of this I've ended up just getting a short one but the beautiful part and I can't stress it enough is when he pulls or if he tries to tug there is zero shock on my sh shoulder because it eases into the pressure and I don't know I think he automatically figures out right this is coming to the end of the line when he feels a little bit of pressure so at least you don't feel that much pressure on yourself so this lead is perfect to use in populated areas or when you take him into a shop and there's other dogs etc so that's when i tend to use mine keep that one short and sweet but yeah that's the positive about it and the negative like i said if i was to pick out anything um it's quite short and you can't exactly extend it etc finally we have the halty lead 
this was recommended to me by another Doberman owner who I really appreciate for giving me this tip because this lead is practically my go-to I use it on most occasions and most days um, it's very convenient for me there's different sections to it, as you can see here there's a couple of different hooks that you can hook it into this is the length of it when it's unconnected and here you have the first hook so this is like basically your standard um, lead if you want to call it the second bit here is another hook which I can literally put around my waist and have him walking at the side of me I'll show you an example in a minute and there's also a, a little hook at the bottom as well so if I want to put it around my head and my shoulder I can have him walking at my heel as well so it's very convenient now if you look at these red straps this is a well obviously not holding on to the red bit but as you can see what I'm doing here holding on to the black bit it it allows you to have better control and a better grip of him if you need to you know pull him a little bit if there's other dogs or other people around or he's misbehaving it gives me the ability to pull him a little bit now let me show you an example of me using this lead so here's how it looks and me using it whilst the lead is fully extended I also believe that first hook where you can see the top of my hand I believe you can also wrap that around their face um, to have better control over their, their head but to be honest with you I've not really tried that out yet <laughs> I'll probably give it a go tomorrow or something but as you can see I'm just casually walking with him I've got enough slack on the lead to have a bit of distance between me and Tux and it's just it's just helpful to have that length sometimes and now I'll show you the second part of it so hooking it to the second hook allows me to put it around my waist I forgot to mention guys that um, this lead also is helpful because if Tux is wearing a harness I can put one of the hooks on one of the clips sorry onto his harness and one onto his collar so you have a lot more control I'll just stick an image somewhere here so you can see anyways getting back to what I what I tend to use it with for as you can see I've just wrapped it around my waist so I've basically got hands free so if my hands are full if I've got shopping in my hands or I've got the baby or I'm pushing the buggy or if I want to go on my phone for a minute it's really helpful because he's literally wrapped around my waist so his body weight compared to mine even if he was to tug or see a squirrel or see a cat or something he's not going to be able to move me as much as he would if it was wrapped around my arm so it's very convenient as you can see I'm on my phone I'm hands free and Tux is literally at the side of me he's not going far so I really like the I really like that I have the ability to do this now just to point out I've tried to use this sort of technique when I'm on my bike and I'm pedaling and Tux is at the side of me I wouldn't recommend it because when I wrap it around my waist and I'm pedaling um, and when Tux tugs a little bit or I stop it does kind of like jolt me off my seat so I don't think that's very safe so what I tend to do is use it with the first tuck you know like keeping the lead long and I just wrap it around you know near my handlebars and the bike frame and finally we have the last tuck this one's amazing watch what this does I can just wrap it wrap it around my head and my shoulder and I've literally got him walking at my heel and I don't even have to do much it's amazing because it keeps him really close to me and the pressure is next to nothing so it's great because um, like I said before with the red handle the red handle bits if he literally tries to literally just even a little bit if he tries to like edge forward or um, you know like go for something or start sparking at another dog I can put my hand in that handle bit and pull him a little bit and I don't even have to put that much force on um, so it's great because I can use his normal collars for that I don't need to put any shot collars on or any e collars and the rest of it because just from that little bit of pressure he does amazing I'm not gonna lie when it comes to this lead I'm a bit biased so <laughs> um, I'm gonna say there's no cons anyways this is probably one of the best investments you can make when it comes to leads I definitely definitely recommend it moving on to the collars guys there's a few different ones I've tried out this first one is a semi prong um, obviously I know this one's way too slack I ended up getting a bigger size than I should have but what I've done is I've tested it out by putting obviously other ones below it and trying to keep it as high as possible but this one works wonders I used a proper one which my friend my friend had he allowed me to use it once when I went out with him he had uh, the Hermsprenger, Hermsprenger whatever they call that brand he had a proper one and it worked 
amazing. But the thing is, using that, if I get Tux dependent on it, I know he's going to act up when he comes off it, which obviously he's literally illustrated. So if you keep him on that prong, he's always going to re relate your heel training, heel walking to that prong. So I wouldn't recommend staying on it for too long. Then we have this one here, which is the e collar. Mine's not the shock one. It's just a high vibration and a low vibration. Obviously, I can edit, I can obviously adjust the the amount of vibration. But this one has been amazing for my recall training. Every time I've taken him out, it's been amazing with this one. And this collar, obviously, is your standard collar. The good thing about this is you can get all different sorts of colors, all sorts of looks. You've got a lot of variety and a lot of choices. So I use that for his comfort and obviously. For his sake, sometimes it's just easier for me to so obviously hook on because the hook's bigger. This last one is a choke collar. I've started using this one often, and I, I believe this is my go to for collars. I tend to keep this one on him, it's the right size, it's not causing him too much pain like the prong, it's not dangerous. Um, yeah, and obviously, if I need to correct him a little bit, I've got that ability to do so without hurting him. So, I would definitely recommend you try out all types of collars but just make sure if you're using the e collar and the sh and the prong collar don't cause the dog too much pain and learn how to use those properly without just going doing it i hope you guys have enjoyed this video or found it useful you know how it is guys i would really really appreciate the support and if you would subscribe to my channel so i can carry on making content like this i just need to know you guys are enjoying these videos so please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, hit the bell and if you've got any comments or recommendations, please leave them down below. Until next time guys, peace out.